Hello, in this tutorial, I will show how to add transitions in Shotcut. <clears throat> First thing, uh, we need a couple of uh, clips on the timeline. I've already done that. And in Shotcut, uh, to make a transition, you have to place two shots next to each other on the timeline. Uh, on, on a single track, unlike other editors where you have to use multiple tracks and add a transition between them on in Shotcut, it's all on a it's on a single track. And uh, additional video tracks are primarily for cutaways or for compositing. But the two shots do need to be um, completely adjacent to one another and there cannot be a gap between them. For instance, um, if we were trying to add a transition by overlapping them right now, because there was a gap, um, that move was rejected and sent back to its original position. So there's two ways to uh, get rid of that gap, and we can just drag and drop uh, to move the clip and utilize the snapping feature to get rid of that gap. Let's undo that. Or we can uh, right click in the gap area and choose remove okay now that we have e these two shots adjacent to one another there's basically two uh, different ways to add a transition and uh, there's two variations on each of those uh, but basically you just have to overlap the clips a little bit um, and the first way is to drag and drop overlap and release and as you can see as a result here, if we play through it, we have a nice video dissolve with an audio crossfade. Um, so that was, uh, we'll undo that. Um, that was dragging the shot B onto shot A. Um, the other, the variation on that is you can drag shot A onto shot B. Okay, and now let's say we wanted to resize the transition. Um, well, we can resize it in um, either direction. We can, um, but not both simultaneously right now. Uh, but we can uh, drag the uh, uh, trimming handle on shot A to the left or to the right and adjust it. Um, and that made that transition longer or we can make it shorter okay so that's the first uh, uh, way of doing it let's show you the second way of doing it and that's through trimming but in order to do that let me right click on this uh, shot shot a and open it as a clip we need some additional frames after the out point on shot A and sometimes these are referred to as handles and on shot B if we open that one up in the source viewer we need some additional frames to the uh, left or before the endpoint. okay now that that's established we can uh, make a transition simply by trimming out shot A and dragging it over shot B. Hold on a minute. Sometimes it's helpful to turn off snapping for this. There we go. And we can play through that. And we have a transition by trimming shot A. Let's undo that. And likewise the variation on this is we can trim the endpoint of shot B to define a transition using the handle on shot B. Now once you've um, defined a transition uh, you can select it and there are some properties if you open up the properties we can see there's video properties and audio properties. Um, by default the video is a dissolve but we can also choose a wipe. Here's a horizontal bar wipe and it went from left to right. If we check uh, invert, it reverses the motion of the wipe 
and now it goes from right to left. And if you look at this, um, the transition has 20% softness by default here. If we drag it all the way down to zero, then we have a hard edge. And you can drag it all the way up to 100% and it's fairly subtle. You could think of it as like a variation on a crossfade or a dissolve. And under the audio options, the default is crossfade the audio. But uh, for some reason, you could choose that you want to, uh, during the transition, to only play the audio for clip A, in which case you would choose mix and leave the slider on the um, A end all the way to the A end. Or if you only want the audio from the B shot, uh, you can drag the slider all the way over to B. If for some reason you want a constant uh, mix of the two, uh, during the transition, you can change the mix level. And um, another thing is under the transition uh, wipe definition, we can also choose custom. And this lets you pick any um, grayscale gradient type of image um, in a number of formats. In here, I have one in a, a PGM grayscale format. That defines like a burst star pattern kind of thing. Uh, let's look at that with a little bit harder edge. And if you go to the FAQ page on the website, shotcut.org, there's um, a few links to some places where you can down some of these, download some of these um, wipe definitions. And that's it. Thank you.